No small cop outs, no episodes of Reject this week. Seven straight reviews. This is going to be a tough one. I'm ready. Let's talk about a possessed doll in a horror film. Because that's not beaten to death by now. Welcome to Rejected, where we either reject or rejoice in all things everything. And we're kicking off this seven deadly rejects with a film about a possessed doll. Annabelle? Child's Play? Were you expecting one of them? Well, you shouldn't be because the title says The Boy, so you should have been expecting The Boy. Where is The Boy? The Boy! So yes, we are doing The Boy. We are watching the horror film called The Boy. We're not doing any boys. Yes, The Boy, from 2016, released around the same time as Don't Breathe, The Conjuring 2, and that dreadful film based off of that internet short about turning the lights on and off. And if you ask me, out of the majority of horror films that were released in 2016, if you can ask me which one did I enjoy the most? The Autopsy of Jane Doe. So why am I not doing that? and doing The Boy. Well, when the trailer dropped, I lost my mind. This doll is what I would have assumed Robert would have looked like if they made a film about the factual possessed doll instead of the indie bollocks one that they've made to resemble Annabelle. I don't know about you, but I think the real Annabelle doll is scarier than the one in the film. They try too hard. The actual Annabelle doll just looks all cute and cuddly, and then the reality of it, this thing is not nice. A horror mystery thriller written by Stacey Minaire. That's the type of name that sounds like someone's dropped a piece of ice down her back. What's your name? Stacey Minnette. And directed by William Brent Bell, starring Lauren Cohen as Greta Evans, an American moving to England for a job as a nanny, paid to, to look after the young boy, Brahms. God, give me a second. All right, this is in the 19th century. Greta Brahms. Well, who the fuck's coming up with these names? I understand Brahms being brought up by mature parents and all, but Greta the fuck gave you that name, Greta? I feel sorry for you. Brahms is the son of the Heelshires. I just, I can't, I, just, I give up with these names now. Heelshire. And the family is visited only by their delivery boy, Malcolm. Who looks a lot like Brahms. Or does he? Yes. Yes, he does. The Heelshires have hired Greta to take care of Brahms while they are away. But Greta soon discovers that things aren't as simple as they appear. She must follow the rules and take care of Brahms, for he can be a sneaky little fecker. But after not following them one too many times, Greta starts to believe that there may be more to Brahms than she has led to believe. The setting is this huge manor. It this looks like a manor house. Not a mansion, but it looks like a manor house. Yet, with all this space, the film is shot as if it's claustrophobic. And that's actually one of the things I like about it. All these places that she could go within the vicinity of the building but she's confined to it so she's basically the, the ones trapped while having to take care of Brahms so let's not waste any more time let's get into the boy no 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 STX entertainment so this film was made by sticks was it and we start off with a nice little montage of Creepy fucking toys. Okay, jeez, I know these. I know these guys are like mature, and they might have old stuff. But fuck me, that kid. Even when he was alive, he must have had fucking trouble. And here we see Greta in the back of a black cab. The driver takes a sneaky look at her. Think I've put the wrong type of film on. Greta, welcome to your new home. Nice little portrait of the Heelshires and their young boy. Nothing slowing these two randy bastards down, are they? <laughs> Fuck me. Go for it, lad. See, I don't know about you, but when I first walk into a house, I know exactly what I like to do. I just like to walk to any room I want to, start playing with shit, moving shit around. Cause the hell, why not? Fucking rude, bitch. And here it is. 
Brahms is a doll. Greta laughs. Now shake his fucking hand. You can already kind of see that there's something off. You know, apart from this old couple are raising a fucking doll. I know how this must look to you, Miss Evans, and to be completely honest, I'm not sure how it all came to this. Mr. Hillshire seems a little more down to earth than his wife. And there's one thing I do like about this film. Nothing is mentioned about why these two are raising a doll. To them, it's their son. But he seems like he's going through with it all for his wife's benefit. But we can't know just yet about why they are raising a doll. Well, it definitely makes him appear a bit more human than fucking Brahms. <laughs> Am I right? Here is where we start to learn a few things about Greta. Why would an American move all this way to be a nanny? Well, her friend over the phone starts to talk about Greta's ex, Cole. He's been calling her non-stop asking about Greta's whereabouts, regardless of the fact that he has a restraining order. So Greta is definitely running away from something. But we will learn more as the film goes on. I'm so sorry. What is she sorry for? If Greta hasn't questioned anything before, she has to be curious now. All Greta has to do is stay in the house, follow the rules, and look after Brahms. So on the first day of a job, what do you do? Get solely shit-faced and falls asleep covering Brahms with a blanket. Yeah, that'll go down well, dickhead. Hang on, did you just launch that doll into the chair? What if he broke? Imagine the Hillshires get back after their time away and go, Oh, where's our little boy? He's here, in pieces. I threw him against the chair the first day you left. My bad. Right, there is a question here that needs to be answered right now. And I'm going to put my neck out and I'm going to ask the question. Americans, what is the appeal of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? That just sounds rank. I'm not going to lie. Okay, what is the deal with the doll? Well, it turns out that Bram was actually their son until the house caught on fire with Brahms inside, leading to his death. Shortly after, the doll appeared, as a way to cope with the loss of their child. So he died 20 years ago. He'd be about your age. Right, if he's Brahms, I'm gonna lose my shit. And I'm sorry, but when it comes to audio, yes, in film, they often redub over because of the background interference. If there's a bit too much wind, there's something happening in the background that you can't stop or intervene or interfere with so you redub it over in post but why does he sound really echoey i assure you of that this is a, a professional courtesy seeing as we're employed by the same people you know? did they even edit any of the audio from being in the recording studio you know it just took me out the entire phone i just left me sat there going eh. spooky looking figure causes her to hit her head a pass out don't worry, it was just a coat. More backstory on Brahm. Apparently he was a strange kid. Never. Mr. Hillshire once spoke to Malcolm about Brahms. He described Brahms as odd. And here we find out that the Brahms has a speaker in his room listening into the entire house. So he has a poor a way to listen into multiple rooms of the house. Why does a doll need to listen out in the bedroom? Who knows? And if things couldn't get any worse, Greta now finds out that her friend has given her ex a new address. So now Greta has to put up with the idea that Cole will write her a letter. Because if an abusive ex is trying to find out where you are and you give them the address, all they want to do is write you a letter. They're not going to show up. Not at all. Spooky shadow in the background cliche. And Brom jump scare. Greta wakes up. Seriously, the same stunt again. This is going to be an ongoing thing, isn't it? We had it earlier where she was dreaming, she saw Brom's bah, jump scare. And now we're here and it goes again. Just something new. And this is where things start to appear more clearer. Kinda. Greta's lost shoes appear outside her door. And when she looks at Brahms, he is now sat up and the list of rules lay beside him. The doll is alive. Greta hides in a room, but Brahms wants her just to follow the rules. He even makes her a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, ew, and leaves it outside the door. But hell, with everything going on, I wonder what Mr. and Mrs. Hellshire were up to. Oh, you the usual thing, writing her son a letter apologising, filling their pockets with rocks and slowly walking into the ocean until the water goes above their head and you start drowning. 
that that's what everyone did on holiday. And here we get the backstory of Greta. She was dating Cole, and all her friends begged her not to be with him due to his controlling and abusive behaviour. But she gave him one more chance when she discovered that she was pregnant. But after one of his violent episodes, she suffered a miscarriage. And now, she sees Brahms as a second opportunity to be the mum she wants to be. This is something that I can actually get on board with when it comes to the storyline. However, it's a bit of a stretch at some points. Let me explain. This ongoing struggle for Greta does come out on the screen, but the angle of the abusive boyfriend is all well and believable. I just don't buy the whole moving to another country to take on the job of nanny. I'm sure they could have just hired someone from England. Yes, I know that they were very picky and they've been trying to hire someone for over a year, and Brahms has said he picked her. This is a woman who was in an abusive relationship, had a miscarriage, got a restraining order out on her ex-boyfriend and thought the best case scenario for him to leave her alone or stay away is to apply for a job as a nanny in England, move country, leaving all her friends and family behind just to get away from this abusive boyfriend. And here we learn more about Brahms. He gets jealous after Greta and Malcolm start getting intimate. So, uh... Here's the part that they didn't tell us about. A young girl named Emily used to play around with Brahms. That is until she was found dead with her head caved in near the family's residence. And the police always said that Brahms was not a suspect, but they always wanted to question him. But by the time that they got around to finally going to question him, the house was already in flames with Brahms inside. Hmm. If you haven't seen this film yet, and you haven't figured it out yet, catch up. You wouldn't hurt me, would you, Brahms? Did you seriously just ask Brahms, would you hurt me? Is he supposed to just turn around like, oh yeah, nah, I ain't gonna hurt you, love. Get a grip. Which makes it all too convenient. When Cole shows up, he can tell he's a dick. He's got a ponytail. Even I don't do that. Let that shit hang. I don't need your help. Did you just ask the possessed doll for help? I'm sure that's gonna go well. Told ya. And now for the big reveal. Why does Brahms not like rats who can get into the walls of the house? Yet, Brahms is still alive and been living in the walls for the past 20 years. The Heel Shires wrote the letter to Brahms explaining that Greta is now his and will look after him. She ain't got a say in this then. I know she's taken the money, but they've obviously not told her that they were going to commit suicide to stay to get away from it all. And he looks fucking stupid with that mask on. I'm sorry. I'd rather have just seen him with his beard and his mangly looking brrr. But no, I, I, that mask is just too much. And here is the big fight scene. Greta must put an end to Brahms killings and save Malcolm. And how does she do that? Brahms! It's time for bed now. She puts him to fucking bed. Are you kidding me? Well, her intention is to get, her, get him into bed and then stab him. Which goes like a plan. She actually just stabs him, making him collapse, and Brahms is dead. Or is he? And Malcolm is still alive. Or is he? Well, that don't make sense. And they drive off, leaving the gates open and the house deserted. Or is it? This film has some good elements, yet suffers from nothing original. As I mentioned earlier, it was released the same year as The Conjuring 2, a sequel to a film that starts by reinventing the possessed doll backstory. So dolls weren't original at the time, and a twist that suffers from one problem. Now I know this is a cool visual, but after Cole smashes the doll's head, Brahms moves around the room clockwise. But how does he climb over the door frame and make it in time to get to the mirror? And hell, he started moving shit about at the frame on the wall beside the mirror he exploded from. What the fuck was the point in moving around for if you were just going to end up back where you were? For story, it wasn't original at the time it came out. And even if it was, it suffers from mediocre writing. I have to give it a two, because it does have a twist that you don't often see much. But you could, you could tell. And as for execution, you do have some great actors in it. 
but they suffer from poor direction and repeated jump scares that just leave you in the sense of they literally just did that why are they doing it again that gets a two which leaves the boy at four out of ten and gets rejected which is a shame because i remember watching the trailer for that film and thinking this is gonna be awesome and then they done did fucked up what did you think of this film leave a comment down below or check out my social media all the links are in the description and if you enjoyed the review hit that like button i'd highly appreciate it and as always if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to never miss a review thanks for watching